News First Newsline. Hello there, very good evening and welcome to another edition of Newsline Live coming to you live as always from our News First studios here in Colombo. Our guest this evening, a member of course of the government, Dr. Suren Raghavan. He is a member of parliament from the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, uh, affiliated with the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. He's from the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. A very good evening, doctor, and welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello, Benedict. Uh, good to see you again. I hope you and your family are safe. Definitely, yes. uh, doctor. We've taken all the safety precautions, as you can see, yes. even here uh, in the studios, uh, since you came here to the studios. Uh, doctor, since you spoke about our safety, we need to start off with the COVID-19 pandemic, which mm. is the priority of every citizen in this country, and I hope it is the priority among parliament and the leaders of Sri Lanka as well. Mm. Um, the vaccination drive in Sri Lanka, let's talk a little bit about it because even yesterday I had Dr. G. Veera Singh on the show mm. and he was not very happy mm. about how the vaccination drive is taking place in Sri Lanka. Mm. Uh, we see certain trade unions, uh, including the GMOA, being accused of strong arming themselves in mm. and getting the vaccine for a specific few. Today, there were ugly scenes, especially in areas like Moratua, where mm. Uh, mm. Uh, local politicians, mayors, got mm. involved and had issued tokens to certain people. And mm. uh, this specific politician was asking the doctors at the inoculation center mm. to only vaccinate people with the tokens. The right. doctors protested, saying, and there's no procedure like that. Mm. Then he mentioned the name of a senior minister, mm. saying, well, that's how the minister wants it done, and that's how it should be done. How badly has this really affected the inoculation drive in Sri Lanka? And what is the Sri Lanka Freedom Party doing about this? Yeah, um, I think your overall question is about the administration of this uh, vaccination process in Sri Lanka. Yes. Uh, now, politicization, corruption, jumping the queue, and you know, doing uh, political strong arm uh, tactics and all that being heard and gossiped, and sometimes newspapers have carried. Your channel, of course, in the forefront of carrying those things as a responsible uh, channel. But this, uh, if you take a step behind, the reason for all these verified and unverified um, talks are because we do not have enough injections, enough vaccines, mm -hmm. as we expected. Right. A number of issues behind because we do not produce this medicine in Sri mm -hmm. Lanka yet. So that's core foundation issue. So we had agreement with India, we had agreement with uh, Russia, we had agreement with China. Hmm. But all those agreements were on friendship basis, nothing right. on international relations or concretely written or bought over agreements. Even hmm. WHO, our um, uh, quota that was hmm. supposed to come. The COVAX. So what happened was there was a severe crisis shortage. Hmm. Now one can say, okay, could not you foresee this. Hmm. Uh, but the last pandemic like this is Spain uh, fever. Hmm. 120 years ago. Even then, because we find that total administration system, uh, human behavior, hmm. and international relations, diplomatic channels, all that get jammed in a hmm. crisis like this. What we could have continued to do is a political uh, discussion that happened. I believe hmm. our East Terminal issue, now this is my personal opinion, hmm. East Terminal issue jolted the hmm. Indian relationship. India had originally, and I met uh, Foreign Minister uh, Subramania Jayashanka when he came here, and they had promised hmm. to give a systematic manner Sri Lanka what Sri Lanka needed. But of course, they were also relying on manufacturers, right. which for Indian crisis, the manufacturer went something completely wrong, and that's why India faced this crisis. Hmm. So two issues here. One, particularly, our I wonder whether we could have managed our Aurdu season better than this. Mm. I think it is, my opinion is yes. We were top 10 countries the way mm. the first wave came. Then the harvest came. Mm. Sri Lankan government gave the historical record high prices for paddy, mm. which means 3 million farmers and their families got money into their hand. Right. With that, the natural tendency is after three years of not celebrating Aurudu. You know, we had uh, last year and then we had uh, also uh, the April bomb. attacks in 2019. And the bomb, mm. we had the Easter bombing and all that. I think there was a push, psychological push, people to go out and celebrate. Mm. I think even in Colombo, I mean, you live mm. in Colombo, yes. people were buying clothes as if they were never wearing clothes. <laughs> now, you can't blame them. That, that's the kind of uh, pressure, mm. democratic, uh, psychological pressure they want mm. to release. But I wonder, 
whether our learned uh, community leaders mm. could have had a different direction mm. to go slow during. Anyway, that's the, the gate was open, the floods had come. Now how do we handle this? So Ben, what we need now is to find out, because we had a, we had a system where myself, I, I, I'm in a committee where we talk about these particular social issues and other kind of a think tank. Mm. We, our target was by December to vaccinate 5 million Sri Lankans mm. so that our tourism, because our overseas also getting vaccinated, mm. so double vaccination was happening, right. our tourism, which is the hardest hit area of our currency, now you, you know, it's everybody's uh, knowledge now, mm. Sri Lanka went to a currency swap with Bangladesh. Right. Now, I have respect for Bangladesh, mm. right? I'm not kind of degrading Bangladeshis as... But Bangladesh, if you look at the history of Bangladesh, and a state and a nation which came to be Being in only in 1972, in 1980, the World Bank declared the poorest of the poor, the concept of poorest of the poor came from Bangladesh because at that time, the World Bank standard was a $2 per day was the world standard of poverty. But mm. when those experts came to Bangladesh, they saw that people in Bangladesh were living with 20 cents of US, not $2. So then they called them poorest of the poor. Mm. But today, Bangladesh, with 164 million population, that's eight times Sri Lankan population, living in a landmass which is smaller than Sri Lanka. They, were 50, they are 54,000 square kilometers. We are uh, 65,000. Mm. So somehow, and literacy rate is half of Sri Lanka. With all these challenges, how did Bangladesh become 36th economy in the world while we are struggling to 69th or 70th economy? We've got our foreign reserves at about 4 billion, they've got 45 billion. Yeah, so our 4.5 billion, our um, uh, reserves today, currently, is equivalent to the amount we have to pay this year as our debt and uh, interest. So Ben, I would like to, I know we are, the global crisis had hit us and we are... Dr. Raghavan, I feel like we've, we've drifted into a different topic. In no, China. that's exactly, that's exactly the point. I, I really feel a responsible media, we, we can all have these current affairs issues, hmm. but I tend to think Sri Lanka, by talking too much about current, we need to address these current affairs, hmm. we need to live today, hmm. we need to, but by living too close to two today, we have lost the main direction. What is the direction, state of Sri Lanka? Some may call this, a, I call this a Puri nation state, mm. the Tamils are a nation and they, they, right. they live si by the side of the Sinhala nation. Mm. But the state of Sri Lanka, that's why I took the Bangladesh uh, example, if mm. you can do a comparative uh, study, mm. where are we heading as a state? As 22 million people, what is our future? Another 10 years time, 15 years time. Do we have question answers for that? I mean, well, COVID, Dr. Raghavan, COVID don't can you come. Think, don't you think that the general public of Sri Lanka, mm. exercising their right to franchise, yes. has elected yes. people like you, people in well, parliament. Well, I'm not elected, I'm appointed. Appointed, <laughs> okay. But you're a member but, of parliament. You're yeah, a member yeah. of the sovereign, you, you represent the sovereignty yeah. of the people. Yeah. So as representatives of the sovereignty of the people, yeah. you are asking me, a member exactly. of the general public, exactly. where is Sri Lanka heading? Ben, the, the that question be that I'm asking you question is, I is, should pose is, to for, you. is, exactly, the question I'm asking is for us to recall ourselves, not to be rhetoric, mm. not to be just going around the same circle that we have gone last 72 years, mm. but hard questions, exactly hard soul searching questions that we need to ask. And I would say, in this program, I'm first time. I'm, I think this program is live program. I'm, yes. I'm first time. I'm saying, the responsibility lies. The prime responsibility lies with the senior Buddhist monks, the leaders, the venerable, the most venerable bhikkhus of this country. Hmm. Why? They create the psychology. They create governments. They advise the people. They are in historical positions of influence, like no other community of fraternity in this country. Dr. Surin Raghavan, I raised my first question on the politicization of the vaccination process yes. in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Um, you, of course, answered and you spoke about the state of Sri Lanka. Mm. But um, I've get, I'm getting questions from my viewers as well, mm. asking you for a direct answer. There has been politicization. Politicization is wrong. If somebody had violated, they should be questioned. 
And if politicians at grassroots level mm. are violating, mm. I think they should be punished even. I mean, mm. that's my clear answer. If you want an answer for the Morotovo situation or other situation, mm. but I'm saying, as but Dr. Raghavan, okay, that's a brilliant answer. Mm. I'd accept that. Um, next question: What are you doing as members of Parliament mm. for these issues? Because mm. I mean, it's, it's easy for, uh, for members of parliament to come out and say politicization is wrong. Mm. But mm. if uh, members of parliament are involved in this politicization process, mm. they need to address it. Mm. People, parliamentarians can address this. Yeah. The members of the general public can't address this. We aren't even allowed to leave our homes mm. to address these. If, if the people were allowed to express their right to free speech, uh, they could have protested. They could have uh, raised these matters. They could have gone to the police to lodge a complaint. Mm. But now with the travel restrictions in place, mm. people are only allowed to go out to the hospital. Mm. If I want to lodge a police complaint, I can't go to the police yeah. because that is not a valid reason accepted by the government for a person to leave their homes. And I understand because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. So when you admit that mm. there is politicization in the vaccination process, mm. what are you as a member of parliament or your party specifically, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, which is an affiliate party of the mm. Sri Lanka Podhujana Peramuna, mm. uh, doing to address this issue? Yeah, now this kind of question can have a straightforward answer and say, I'm not doing that and I can escape my body. No. As a, you are, you are what are you doing to background, stop the politicization? Background, uh, yeah, background uh, thesis of your question is to ask, as a community of lawmakers in yes. the parliament, yes. are we doing the correct thing? That, are you doing enough? Are, are, are you doing enough? Are you doing the correct thing? But then you must realize all these members, except for people, few people like me, I think 17 people like me, are directly elected at two or three elections at Pradesh Sabha, at hmm. the provincial council level, and then I have come to parliament. Hmm. So they are coming from a particular cultural background which state power responsibility is completely either mismanaged hmm. or mislocated. Hmm. Now for instance, when I drive, the, I drive my vehicle to the parliament hmm. most of the time. Hmm. Not only during this curfew, uh, this pandemic time, mm -hmm. because I, I live in Colombo Five, mm. so I don't need to bring a barrage of uh, security and my uh, staff for that. They can do something else. Mm. But then the whole idea about the checking point is why are you driving the vehicle? Where are the so the the, the idea about politician is a person who has power who should use the power, and if nothing is happening, th this comes from the people, grassroots people, mm -hmm. and say, sir. You have to do this. Hmm. You have to shout at people. And otherwise, hmm. this country. So that culture needs to be addressed. Now, hmm. I know few people are trying, hmm. and I am particularly one who is willing to pay a personal price for that, because I believe unless we people who are had the opportunity of going overseas and studying and seeing other societies hmm. are able to lead this discourse hmm. and be an example, I don't think we can ask the grassroots to change. So it is up to the leadership. It is up to the cabinet members. It mm. is up to the all the members of the parliament. Now, for instance, now this may be a political thing. I personally felt the leader of the opposition should have taken the vaccine mm. when it was offered to everybody. Now, but didn't he, members of the royal family get the vaccine only a few, uh, yeah, a few but, weeks ago? Yeah, but different conditions. They, they, are, they are not people. Royal family does not mean for job opportunities. Nobody comes and taps their doors for, give me a job. But leader of the opposition definitely meets people, and he was having his own campaign of going and meeting grassroots people. Hmm. So as a responsible person, I felt hmm. he should have taken and been say, okay. Are you aware of any personal reasons that the leader of the opposition I don't know. I think his, his political, uh, political reason that he gave was, he said, he wished to give the opportunities to the grassroots people until the last citizen is uh, vaccinated, I would not. I mean, that's what he told me the parliament when I was there as well. Mm. So I, I, I did not speak to him that time. Later on a day, I asked him, is not responsibility means also leading by example? Mm. So if, because there was fear about this whole thing, even now, I, I, I don't know whether, which faith but you clearly, belong to. But some, some media <laughs> is saying, some media, I don't know which faith you belong to, some media is saying there's a particular people called born again Christians mm. are against this vaccine. Mm. I do not know whether this is the truth of this, but I don't know whether this is a created one. Mm. So when there is confusion like that, leaders, community leaders, political leaders, intellectual leaders, social leaders must live above that situation and say, look, myth is myth and uh, science is science, we have found an answer to go forward. But doctor, doctor, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's, don't you believe it's kind of hypocritical that you speak of myth and science 
when you are a member of a government mm. that um, whose speaker and senior members of government uh, drank certain uh, concoctions or certain tonics that were said to cure COVID-19. And, and the creator believed of this to, tonic... At that time, it was believed to, when we did not have any vaccine, we were believing that could come, the, the local or the indigenous medicine can answer. That was, that immediately, was initially when the vaccination began also. Yeah, immediately this, this saga when, when it came out that it is not producing the expected or so, the but, but, but proclaimed you, result. Okay. Government stopped it, and government did not. That person, that native doctor, wanted a certificate mm -hmm. of um, a scientific certificate. But doctor, it was all refused. The, we saw the minister of health coming out and drinking yes. this and saying it tastes good. Yes. And and is it? Do you believe it's wise for a member of government to uh, to uh, to propagate or to advertise a tonic that has not been tested? What if tomorrow? What if tomorrow the minister of health discovers uh, uh, a medicine on her table and and comes out and says, "Well, this medicine might work," mm. and then would it be the same if the government's argument is to be that at the time we didn't have any information on that, but when we found out it doesn't work, then we told the people, "No, no, no, we're sorry, it doesn't work." Yeah, is that is that a fair argument? I think your you your question has some logic. I, if I, it was me, I would have thought we would have sent it to the laboratories and asked for expert opinion mm. whether it has any nuance of healing this uh, so-called uh, virus that is becoming. Uh, doctor, we need but to I, cross over to a yeah. short commercial break. Yeah. We're at a very interesting point of our conversation. Uh, of course, uh, I urge our viewers to continue to stay tuned. We will be back after this short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Newsline Live. News First, Newsline. Hello there, welcome back. You're watching Newsline Live. We're in conversation with uh, Dr. Surain Raghavan, parliamentarian, a member of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and a member of the governing faction, the Sri Lanka uh, Nidhas Um Dr. Raghavan, we were discussing about uh, this uh, tonic that was introduced back in the day and how you said that the people need to believe in science. You said, you also said that, um, uh, referring to the opposition leader, that you believe uh, the opposition leader should have taken the vaccine when it was given to parliament. Social responsibility. Social yeah. responsibility, because it would have, um, it would have given more uh, well, faith, and, faith to yeah. the general public That's in right. receiving this vaccine. However, mm. uh, Dr. Raghavan, if I am to look at this as a member of the general public, I saw the opposition leader in parliament saying, I will not get vaccinated until every citizen in this country gets vaccinated. Hmm. This vaccination is the way out for Sri Lanka. We hmm. need to improve our vaccination process. The hmm. uh, opposition leader continuously uh, reiterated that in parliament. Hmm. And Dr. The Sri Lanka Podujana Perimun, the government, if I may refer to you, because you are the Sri Lanka Freedom Party is a member of the government. When the vaccine came out initially, hmm. Uh, uh, Minister uh, Vasudeva Nanakara said that we don't need vaccines now, we will bring down the vaccines when we need the vaccines. Mm. And this was when members of the governing faction were, were advertising this tonic that was supposedly to, clear, to uh, cure COVID-19. Mm. And as you are a member of the government, I know you didn't personally advocate for this tonic, but as you as a member of the government, when you say that the opposition leader not taking uh, the vaccine uh, diminished the, the faith that people had in the vaccine and when you say he should have done that for the people to believe in At science. At least it has increased. Uh, I, I, I feel that's a bit hypocritical yeah. given the fact that members of no, the I government don't know, were, uh, were advocating yeah. for a completely... Yeah, I don't know what context uh, Vasudeva Nanayakar who is uh, a strange leftist leader we know in this country and uh, I mean he must, he should be and he must be having a grasp root understanding. I don't know what context he said that we will not go for the vaccine. Mm. But the question about um, social responsibility and opinion leadership mm. always has been a kind of a cultural, extremely conditional, situ uh, conditional compartmentalized opinion in this country. Mm. Mm. You know, political leaders make statements, mm. religious leaders make statements. Most of them are rhetorics for that situation. I'm not mm. referring to Mr. Vasudeva now, mm. but I'm taking a overall because I am a political scientist. Mm. I'm trained by, by discipline to look at uh, things at a overall and a more wider manner mm. than a pinpoint issue. Pinpoint issues are important, mm. but we need to ask the question, mm. why something is happening mm. and what is happening immediately? Mm. Yes, it's burning now. The house is burning. But we must also ask, where the is the fire? Is burning. Yes, where is the fire coming from? Unless we ask that question, mm. we will be only firefighting, right, what we are doing here. Mm. 
right? Uh, not the ship that I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you can ask the question. I thought you would ask me about that. I was told that today that ship was denied uh, entry by a couple of ports and therefore it entered uh, Sri Lanka. I believe that is a conversation for another time. Because yes, we have only I, a I few don't know, minutes but if there are accusations sure. like that, hmm. one need to verify whether harbour master allowed it or the shipping authorities allowed it. Dr. Raghavan, we, are, actually, are, we actually wrote to the owner company of yeah. uh, the Express Pearl yeah. and they did confirm that yeah. there was a leakage of acid. Right. Uh, and this news report will be added. It's and there's uh, danger in, in, in fire. And there, was, on, on, on and there was a call on these ports, but then that's a different discussion entirely. Yeah. Now, I think what happens is in, in, in terms of this importance of uh, social media platforms today, whether it's YouTube or TikTok or anything, is important is to this ability to the citizens to go after sometimes unverified, sometimes verified, um, issues that are backing these uh, information and uh, we... Dr. Raghavan, if I could the, interrupt you just yes, there for sure. a second. Um, you said you were a political scientist and you look at these issues in an angle of why does this happen instead of what is happening. Mm. But I'm raising this question to you and I expect you to answer this question mm. as a member of parliament in Sri Lanka. The people in this country are fighting over vaccines. Mm especially because of politicization of the vaccination No, process. the lack of uh, politicization happens. Mm -hmm. It's because of lack of uh, the, the dosages. The lack of dosages. Yes. So because the politicization doesn't proceed. Mm -hmm. the, what the real fact is that we absolutely are delayed mm -hmm. by getting the, the promised, expected, estimated dosage. Otherwise, this situation wouldn't have come. I mean, I'm not saying for a moment Sri Lankans are such, you know, are un... Uh, imaginative situation that they, have, they will kill each other for a vaccine. Hmm. But it is because lack of vaccine and then of course the fear psycho sets in hmm. where everybody wants to get their priority. Hmm. So that's how these uh, doctors' families were given and then hmm. PHIs were uh, slamming with that. And then um, I do not know with the parliamentarian... But Dr. Raghavan, but Dr. Raghavan really quickly, uh, because we have a few minutes yeah. left, uh, the country, the entire country is in crisis right now. We yeah. all need to mm. first... The first step in solving any problem is to acknowledge mm. that there is one. Yeah. Um, we are facing uh, an issue as far as the economy goes. The COVID-19 mm. pandemic is raging strong. Mm. We don't have enough vaccines, as you quite rightly pointed out. Yeah. Yeah. The Sri Lankan people now look towards leadership. Yes. Leadership that was promised to the Sri Lankan people that will bring us out of this misery mm -hmm. and into the developed world. But now when we start looking up, we don't see that leadership, Dr. Surin Raghavan. Do you believe that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party is the direction that we should look into? And if so, what are you doing? What have you done? Mm -hmm. What will you do as far as the vaccination issue goes to prove that that is the right direction that we should look into? Yeah, I, I do not want to take this opportunity to uh, again politicize and promote my party versus another party or my leadership versus another. We're leadership. looking for a leader, but Dr. Sarin. Ben, ben you, you are a student of law. I'm a lawmaker as they call now. Yes. Right? We, you, you verify what we discuss in the parliament. The Supreme Court verifies and says yes or no to us. So we are, we are on the same side but hmm. counter but different name. Tell me, let me ask one question from you. From hmm. You've been asking questions. In your judgment, what is the single most critical, if you want to call crisis, that the state of Sri Lanka is facing today? I don't think I'd be able to single out one because we're facing a geopolitical crisis. Exactly. exactly. So this, that is exactly why I started saying that you, when you see a flood, when you see a pothole, you must remember that pothole is not itself a crisis, but there are issues. Sri Lankan state for the last 72 years, let me finish with this, had been denying or struggling with a proper liberal democratic process. Hmm. 1948, first cabinet, first decision was to defranchise the Tamil people, upcountry Tamil people who were supporting this economy. And that act kept on rolling. Hmm. And even today, it's, it's the same case. So without democracy, a promising post-colonial country, which was the second richest country in 1948, only mm. second to Japan and equal to that time the economy uh, after, even after the war in Japan. But today and that time the dollar to US dollar to Sri Lankan rupee was 2 rupees and 10 cents. Mm. And today it is almost 200 rupees. So what we have here, mm. yes, politicization of vaccine, you may say the police is corrupt, you may say, so thousand and one questions we can uh, label out. 
But fundamental mm. question is that we have missed out. It is not this government's crisis. It is, a, it, it is a crisis of the former government. It was a crisis of the previous government and it rolled on from the very first government onward. Sri Lanka, I think, as collectively, all parties, all ethnic leaders, all intellectuals failed to take the open democratic process. And today, we are having multiple issues. Multiple because and it's so the issue is, how, Dr. Do, Raghavan, how do we get out of this? How do we get out of this? How do because we get out of this? Time, Dr. Suren Raghavan. I think the honest answer is, when there is a disease, when there is a crisis, to be honest about ourselves. And that is why I'm appealing to the most venerable Mahanayakas. Mm. Please, this country's future, it's in your hand. Because you are the most influential Dr. Suren Raghavan, I have to interrupt you there because yes. we are out of time, Dr. Suren Raghavan. Thank sure. you very much uh, for joining us Call on Call me show. another time, welcome. Uh, Dr. Suren <laughs> Raghavan, of course, uh, judging by what you said, it's up to the general public to appoint able people to the government if they are to get out of this crisis. Because mm. according to your analogy uh, of the current situation in the country, we do not have such a breed. Thank you very much for watching Newsline Live. Take care. Until we meet again.